Man, I'll tell you what, Colts Nation. There is nothing I love more than pretending that I am the GM of the Indianapolis Colts and going through those thought exercises and just looking at it that way. Now, I love talking about the players. I love scouting them and going through how they fit into certain schemes and different situations. But overall, there's just something that I find so fascinating about looking at things through the lens, through the perspective of the general manager. Now, having said all of that, once in a while, I'm presented with a situation where I'm incredibly grateful that I'm not the one that's actually making the decision. And this right here is one of them. So welcome to any of you who are here for the first time. You're listening to the Riding the Bench Colts cast. For those of you who don't know, my name is Justin Alfiero. I'm recording live, well, live to recording from the bedroom studio right here. The locks, luscious, the Achilles, torn, the crutches against the wall, the bed, not made. But it's all right. And listen. If there's anything that I ask of you while watching this episode, if if you're enjoying it at any point, just shoot the video a like, bloop, just like that. That gets the channel growing. It tells me that you like it so I can make more content like this. It tells YouTube the same. And then, you know, you're just doing a good deed. A Colts fan helping a Colts fan, right? As for subscribing, feel free to do that. I'd be incredibly grateful. But I do really just make these for Colts fans and, you know, for entertainment, if you will. So with that out of the way, Let's talk about that quarterback situation, right? So, as most everybody knows by now, Lamar Jackson shot the tweet heard around the world the other day, stating that he had requested a trade from the Ravens, which subsequently has now become Colts news. Last I checked, I believe we're plus 300 and the favorites to get Lamar, right? For those of you who are the betting people, DraftKings, FanDuel, anyone, someone, no sponsorships here, but I'll take them, bring them over. Now, I am a little confused as to what what's relevant, I guess, for Lamar requesting that trade. I mean, he's already allowed to negotiate with other teams, right, on that non-exclusive franchise tag. I'll trust there's something there that I don't know about. I don't know everything about the NFL. And moral of the story is that Lamar's time with Baltimore seems to be coming to an end. So now with the fourth pick in the draft, the Colts have the option to either now go for Lamar or get this quarterback through the draft. And, And to me, I just, you know, the fan base seems pretty split on it. Not for anything. So am I. So now I could approach this episode one of two ways, right? I could either just flat out give my opinion on what I think they should do, or I could simply just try to walk you through some of the nuances, the minutia of what ultimately is going to be a decision that sets this franchise up or sets us up for failure for the next five to 10 years. And I'm going to choose to go with the latter. I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to further the discussion and we'll see where it goes from there, right? So let's start with Lamar Jackson. As I said before, I don't really know what the difference is exactly between the the, the trading for him and and signing him on the non-exclusive tag. But for the sake of the discussion, let's just assume that both of these are going by the rules of the non-exclusive tag, right? Which means we'd have to give up this year's first rounder and next year's first rounder in either scenario. The first question that comes to mind, this is a simple question. This is the obvious question, right? Layup. We're not talking basketball. Is that worth it for the Colts? Now, I know your knee-jerk reaction is likely, of course Lamar is worth that. But no, 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 that's not what I asked. Hold on. What I asked was, is that worth it for the Colts? Now, in asking that, I'm certainly not trying to take a side. Now, let me just lay out what we're giving up if we go the route of Lamar Jackson, at minimum. Our first rounder this year, our first rounder next year, And then at least $200 million, right? Now that's going to make it, keep in mind, what is that, five of six years in a row by the time we get to the end of the next draft that we didn't have a first-round pick, right? And now let's just go with what we know about Lamar Jackson. Lamar is spectacular. He's a former MVP of the NFL, rightfully so, deservingly so. He's a top-ten quarterback in this league, and there are zero questions about that. You can't argue it. Some would even argue top five. I wouldn't go that far, but that's neither here nor there. This isn't about my opinion. This is about the Colts and their quarterback situation. We also know that he's been hurt down the stretch in the past two seasons with a style of play that could possibly lead to more injuries. Now, of course, we don't know that's going to happen. I don't want to hold it against them per se, but it's kind of hard to not 
have that circling in your brain when you see the guy running around, not exactly the biggest dude in the world, right? Of course, Jack, more Jack than me, but nonetheless, he's been a mixed bag in the postseason, right? Some days are good, some days are bad. He's never made an AFC championship. So all of that being said, I ask again, is it worth it for the Colts to give up what's required to get him? And again, I'm literally asking you, this is where you drop a comment on the video because I don't know, right? In fact, I'll even ask a few more questions while I'm at it. Would the Colts be favorites to win the AFC South with Lamar Jackson as their quarterback? Would they be a Super Bowl contender? Would he be able to do any better with the receivers that we have in place than the receivers that Baltimore has provided for him? And I don't have these answers, unfortunately. I wish I did. I wish I could just shed the light. I wish I could just give you the answers and we would all know. I don't have it. I can't read the future. I know he's great, but I also know all those other things I just listed are true, right? I'm simply raising these questions as ones that you should be considering when you're coming to your conclusion about Lamar Jackson. That's all. And now as far as drafting a quarterback goes, for any of you who've been here before, I've been on the record that this year's draft class, despite having quarterbacks that I do like, really has no clear consensus, number one. And the other day, we actually heard Chris Ballard echo that sentiment. He said he feels good about the depth of the position, right? It's ultimately why they decided not to trade up to number one. They just weren't sure. No one had really separated themselves. And, 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 you know, quite frankly, I feel good about that depth as well. You know, I've infamously, and when I say infamously, I mean to all like six of my listeners, am a huge Tanner McGee guy, right? So you have guys like Tanner McGee and Hendon Hooker that are both options that I would assume are available in the late first round and maybe even that early second round pick. And now, of course, there's going to be obvious factors if we draft a quarterback when you juxtaposition it with Lamar Jackson, right? We obviously wouldn't have to give up multiple first rounders or or whatever that is, right? We wouldn't have to pay that money up front, that $200 million, which allows us to build the team that we want to build around that guy. All of these things are true. But what we may not be thinking about is this. Given what the Colts have been through as an organization, what we as a fan base have been through, is there a benefit to us just investing in a quarterback that has never played anywhere else that is just our guy? Do you know what I'm saying? That A guy that just doesn't come with a story that's already written or some narratives around him, some baggage. Not saying that Lamar has this stuff. He has the stories. Not baggage, I think it has a negative connotation. But nonetheless, would it just be good for the Colts to draft a guy and quietly build instead of just heaping a load of expectations onto us? Because again, even though we just went, well, what was it, 4-13, and 5-12, and 12, what the hell is the difference? It's easy to forget now, in hindsight, but we were expected to be a legitimate AFC contender this season, right? And obviously we fell short. So do we want to put those expectations on ourselves once again? Are we willing to be patient? And now again, I don't have the answers. I'm simply presenting them. That's why the episode is titled though, around the fact that the Colts are in a very tough spot. This is not black and white. This is not something that's a very, very simple fix for the Colts. Uh, but I will say this, it's a good problem to have when you have multiple options and you're trying to find a franchise quarterback. That I can tell you. And then just one final scenario before I wrap up the episode. What if Chris Ballard and Shane Steichen feel that there are either one, multiple solid options in this draft, or two, none that they want to draft in the top five? Is it possible that Ballard's frisky little comment about trading back in Shane Steichen's introductory press conference, does anyone remember that? Or was it just me that really took that as a big takeaway in that press conference? Did that hold a little more weight than maybe we felt it did at the time? Chris Ballard, if nothing else, say what you want about him, has been very open, honest, and transparent. Some would even call it smug or condescending at times, and I'll leave that alone. But what I'm saying is for sure, Chris Ballard has always told us the truth, and that's whether we like it or not. So when I hear a statement like that, and I hear him say things like we're comfortable with the depth here, is trading back something the Colts are considering? I don't know. And listen, despite the fact that we as fans don't know, right? We're just, we have no clue. Right now, the Colts have been pretty quiet. Of the options I just presented, we don't know where the Colts are leaning, but I do have a funny feeling that the Indianapolis Colts, Chris Ballard, Jim Mercer, and Shane Steichen are keeping a secret from us, the fan base. (laughs) 